another day here at the Australian Open for 2014 at the Darabin International Sports Centre. So day three is just about to conclude and a man has joined me who uh, loves the Australian Open but hasn't been a particularly happy hunting ground for you individually over the years, Kelvin Kirko. Welcome to BATV and uh, it's been a great event again this year. Yeah, fantastic and the weather's terrific. Uh, I don't know about the finals but it's certainly been a good few days. Uh, the greens are running really well and some of our Australian squad players are performing well as well. So we're getting down the nitty gritty, especially in the, the men's and ladies singles. We often speak about the events that players of all levels love to get to, and this is definitely one of them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's always a great field. Uh, the Australian Open is probably the most prestigious singles event. Not only prestigious in singles, but all I see your team events, pairs and fours. So all the players come from all over Australia, all the states. They get together and come here and uh, play here at Darabin on the, on the greens here, which are a bit challenging at times as well. You've been here all week already. Uh, finals come up on Thursday night, or, th or Thursday afternoon and Thursday night for the singles. Have you got an early selection for us? Oh, it's a bit hard to pick. I mean, uh, you know, we've got Karen Murphy, uh, you know, triple crown winner, world champion. She's in the field now, so she's looking really good. Uh, I'm sure she'd like to go one better than last year. I guess in the men, it's uh, it's going to come down to the wire, I think. You've got Leif Selby, big-time performer in the singles. Brett Wilkie's there as well. So, you know, there's a number of players that can get over the line. Let's talk about what's happened with you as a national selector over the last few months. Obviously, um, a really um, arduous and involved process to get a Trans-Tasman team name, which go to Tarragon from the March from March 18 to the 20th. Um, tell us a little bit about the process and and, and the 10 that we ended up having. Yeah, listen, it was very close. Uh, it was a hard job being a selector, I must say, for the first time. I think uh, we've got such great depth in our uh, both female and male squads at the moment. Uh, you know, the pick the five players that hopefully will go on and uh, play at the Commonwealth Games. Or we're hoping it's the best five for the Trans Tasman. So, if that team can go away and win the win that, you know, series in the Trans Tasman, you know, it puts them in good stead for the Commonwealth Games. But I think the the ones that have missed out, very narrow finish. I mean, uh, you know, unfortunately, ten doesn't go into five, or seven doesn't go into five. So, the ones that have just missed out. They've still got an opportunity because of the guys that we've now selected uh, don't perform well. Um, there's always a couple there knocking on the door to, to get their chance and they really want to go to the game. So, you know, the pressure's on the team, I guess, to perform. They win the series, they're looking good to go to the Commonwealth Games and I think we've got a good mix in the team as well, a lot of experience. The guys have done uh, really well over in Scotland earlier in the year, same with the girls. So, you know, I'm really confident uh, that the team will perform well. Uh, and of course, we've got the under 18s and the development squad as well. So, you know, some good depth there in the Australian bowls at the moment. You're a Commonwealth Games singles gold medalist yourself. Uh, Aaron Sheriff in the men's, Kelsey Cottrell in the women's. Did they almost pick themselves given the form they had leading into the camp and during the camp? Oh, not really. Listen, it's good to have the runs on the board, but uh, like I said, there's some really good depth there at the moment. Uh, you know, it was close, you know, the, the girls had their ups and downs in the trials. Uh, you know, anyone could have won, every day was different. Uh, they all had their good games, some had their bad games at different times as well. But uh, like I said, it's just so, so close with the depth at the moment in the, in the squad, both the female and male. So if you're in there, you're a chance. The men's is really well established with the names that we've already seen named, but uh, I suppose it's nice to welcome a, a young female like Carla Rogers into the side to, to compliment some, you know, some of the oldies, uh, you know, Lindsay Clark, Karen Murphy. Oh, definitely. And I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we're looking at endurance as well. And Carla's got a lot going for her in that part. She's, you know, very fit, uh, energetic, uh, brings a bit to the team as well. So, you know, she's uh, up and coming, I guess. Uh, she's got a chance now to play the Trans-Tasman. She'll be looking to go really well. I'm sure she'd do well uh, in Scotland as well. And, you know, we've got a good bunch of five there for the girls. Um, but like I said, there's a couple that have just narrowly missed out as well. Disappointed, you know. It's unfortunate, they're going to be hoping they probably don't go so well, but uh, I'm sure they'll still be uh, proud of them, whatever happens. Tough job we know, and, and Steve Glasson has already said he had a few sleepless nights during the camp there at Maradong in terms of what he was thinking about having to make in terms of phone calls and emails to the non-selected players. Um, how tough is it? I mean, you're friends with a lot of these people as well as, as, as um, club mates and so forth. Um, how do they take it and, and what do they do now to try and sort of, I suppose, stay, stay in the mix for com game selection? Yeah, well, you know, they just got to go out and do their work, I guess. Uh, still put the practice in, do their drills, uh, you know, still play in competitions that's still going on at the moment, I guess. Like I said, it was very, very close. I feel for Stevie, the you know, Australian national coach, uh, you know. And the thing is, we are good friends with a lot of the players. Uh, and that's what makes it tough, you know. You get to the table and, uh, you know, like I said, six doesn't go into five. 
you've got to try and put your friendship aside and, and pick what you feel is going to be the best five or the, the five that will win at the time. So, yeah, you've got to put those feelings to the side. It's a tough choice, like I said. Uh, it's probably the hardest decision I've had to make uh, in my selection uh, so far, um, but hopefully they can go do the job. Just looking beyond Trans-Tasman, and uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up with this, but uh, Trans-Tasman coming up at the Com Games after the World Championships of 2012, five gold, two silver, we're going to be the hunted? Oh, definitely. Listen, all the other all the other you know countries are going to be after Australia, but like I said, they performed well at the eight nations this year. I think we've got the team that can go there and do well. Uh, it all comes back to the weather, of course. Uh, the Northern Hemisphere, they had great weather when the Eight Nations was on. Unfortunately, if they get a lot of rain, like what's going on in England at the moment, the green's going to be a lot slower and it'll bring everyone back to the paddock. But, uh, you know, they'll do well. Australia will go well. Thanks for your time. Thank you.